welcome. Thanks for joining me. My name is Violet and today I'm super excited to be able to participate in a collab that Mom Does Life Handmade and Blondie Next Door are having for the month of May and their challenge is for us to use cardboard and make something uh, useful for our home. So what I decided to do was use one of these project cardboards that you can get at Dollar Tree and basically I cut both ends off those sides that you fold in for your project board. So just go ahead and cut those off, set one aside, and then one we're going to use to make our actual little cubbies. What I did was basically measured out, a, basically I want to say it was a size of a 10 inch triangle or rectangle. And then I measured out a three inch, two three inch um, rectangles as well. Then I went up five inches. Each one of my cubbies for my organizer, I made a different size. So the first one again was a 10 inch. Then I went up five inches. So then here I am marking my five inch above and go ahead and do that and then use um, one of these angled rulers and go ahead and make your little rectangles. And again, I made three different sizes, but make sure those uh, smaller rectangles are all the same size. And one thing that I could have done and I didn't do, um, but I'll show you how I did it, is you could just make rectangles um, for the ends instead of making that um, I'm sorry, a triangle for the ends instead of making that rectangle and then cutting it up, um, cutting it in an angle, if that makes sense. But I'll show you how I did that in just a few minutes. So just go ahead and use an X-Acto knife or some scissors to cut that cardboard off of the main cardboard. And then go ahead and make another um, rectangle, whatever size you like, depending on the size of cubbies you want and how many. Um, and then I just basically used the, where I cut to make that five inch above that five inch line so just go ahead and do that and then you're gonna cut this piece off as well so you can make as many as you like or as little just depending on the size you can even make this I mean I made them kind of deep um, but I did that for a reason because I do want to put you know papers and stuff like that in it and I didn't want them to fold over um, but if you're thinking of maybe just using this to place some um, letters or things like that you might be able to do just a four inch or three inch height instead of that five inch height so it's optional um, again just depending on what you're going to use it for and um, what's the purpose for your organizer so now what I did after I measured out that 12 inch and cut it out, I'm going to go ahead and just use it kind of as a template and make another one. And I'm not sure if I'll keep it this length or not at this point, but I decided to go ahead and measure it out because I know that that's the biggest I'm going to make. So if I decide to keep two of them the same, um, I already have them the same size, of course. So here, after I traced it out and used it as a template, I went ahead and just cut those two side pieces um, that are three inches in width. And then I cut my third and final um, cubby off of that extra cardboard. I was super excited to, about this project because there's so many things you can use a cardboard for. I really haven't played with it that much, uh, but I have seen a lot of other tutorials and uh, other DIYers that use this for so many things. I mean, I've seen them being used as headboards and um, even coffee tables and end tables. So it's so fascinating to me to see all the different things that other DIYers and crafters out there are doing. Um, if you've done anything unique or anything that you're proud of you, um, using cardboard you know, and you have an Instagram, go ahead and link me on your Instagram. I'd love to see your projects or let me know down below what your Instagram name is and I'll be sure to follow you to see your projects. 
And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and leave that information down below as well. So here I am cutting just a slight angle on my sides. I thought I was going to leave it this way, but I didn't. And this is what I was talking about. Instead of having to do this step, you could have just made that uh, a rectangle, I'm sorry, a triangle at the beginning and just cut those out. Um, because you'll notice that I do cut them smaller a little bit long, a little bit later. So what I'm going to do next is basically I'm going to start doing the back of my organizer. So I decided to use this contact paper that I purchased at Dollar Tree as well, and it's the floral one. There's so many different designs. Um, even on Amazon, they have quite a few different designs. So what I did was basically just free measured it. Didn't really do it exactly, um, but I did make sure that I had extra paper on all, all four sides in order for me to fold it back to have a seamless line um, and make it look nice and neat and finished um, in the front. So just go ahead and cut an, a little bit larger than normal, um, your normal cardboard size of your contact paper or whatever paper you're going to use. You can even use um, wallpaper. You can use wrapping paper if you have wrapping paper. Um, so once you're done cutting out whatever paper you decide to use, in my case, I had to peel it off. So I just peeled off a little section just to start it off. But before I added it to my cardboard, I went ahead and used some a spray adhesive. I love using spray adhesive when I use contact paper or any paper. Um, you can even use it, for example, on your wallpaper or even wrapping paper if you decide to do it that way. Because it doesn't get bulky and it makes you, once you add that onto your paper, it's going to stick and stay wherever you place it. So it's very, very good, and I re highly recommend you use it for any kind of contact paper um, that you're going to place on anything just to make sure that extra security and know that it's not going to move or peel off anytime. Just go ahead and peel off your contact paper from that um, backing that it comes with and just rub it and make sure that there isn't any um, air pockets or wrinkles on your paper as you add it onto your cardboard. Once you've added it all to your, uh, the front, just go ahead and flip it over and just fold over all those sides. What I do on the corners, um, I just cut it in an angle and try to make sure that I give it more of a finish line um, towards the front. So you'll see that I add some more spray adhesive just to make sure that it does stay in place um, on the back as well. And just cut your ends, cut any extra paper that does have and cut off, um, make an angle cut in order for it to fold and make that seamless line in the front. You can uh, add contact paper or any kind of paper that you're using on the back as well, but I just didn't want to waste it because I figured it's going to be hanging on my wall so you're not going to see the back at all. Um, so I didn't went ahead and just left it as is. You can, like I said, add more of the same paper you're using or you could even paint it if you like, if you don't want that um, cardboard to be showing towards the back. And there you have your backing. So once you're done with your backing, We'll go ahead and set that aside and then we're going to start working on our cardboards again or our um, cubbies. And what I'm going to do is just start gluing the sides to it. So I am just using the backing just to make sure I have it wide enough and deep enough to what I want to use it for. And like I said, here I am just trying to make sure that they're all even, all my sides, um, because once you do glue it onto your backing, you want to make sure they're all even. If not, it's not going to lay flat on your um, backboard and it's just not going to fit right and you won't really be able to use it. So make sure they're all nice and even once you, uh, before you glue them onto your um, actual cardboard cubby slot. And all I used to glue and attach these cardboards together was my hot glue gun, but you can use E6000 or even some um, 
permanent glue or fix all glue or even super glue if you don't feel comfortable just using your hot glue gun. Um, what I'm going to do after I use my hot glue gun is basically I'm going to add a little piece of cardboard right where I um, right where the main cardboard for the cubby and my side cardboard meet and I'm going to do that in order for it to stay stronger and sturdier um, but if you don't feel comfortable adding that extra cardboard right there um, you can add a piece of um, maybe a popsicle stick or something like that if you want it even stronger um, but here they all are all three of them and like I said what I'm going to do is just add an extra piece of that cardboard on my on my corners and all I did was just cut a little piece of cardboard but not too thin um, something thick enough to where once you place it there it is going to help out so just go ahead and run some glue on that line and then just place that piece of board that you cut off in an angle right there in that corner and make sure you, you glue it in an angle that way it glues and attaches to both pieces of cardboard you don't want to just lay it flat and have it lay on that other the front cardboard because that won't help um, but just go ahead and make sure it's in an angle so it attaches to both of them and I did this to all three of my uh, slots And there you go. So just continue doing that to all three of them. I was truly inspired to kind of think out of the box and try to make more items using cardboard. Like I said, I haven't really used it that much. Um, but I am going to start using it just a little bit more and try to do different projects with them um, So stay tuned for that if you haven't subscribed to my channel um, Please subscribe to my channel and make sure you go check out Mom does life homemade handmade. I'm sorry It's mom does life handmade and also blondie next door and check out their channels and subscribe to theirs I just met them um, and started reviewing and looking at their channels and they have some awesome awesome DIYs over there as well so just go ahead and check them out after you're done using, watching this tutorial so once I was done gluing and allowing those slots to dry what I decided to do instead of adding wallpaper or contact paper to my slots I decided to go ahead and paint them black so all I'm doing is just giving it a really good coat of black paint and then just setting them aside and allowing them to dry. Now, I didn't paint the interior of these little slots or clubbies. Um, I just left them as is, but if you, again, want to, you can. You can even add paper in the, in the backing just to give it a different look. Um, basically, it's your choice of how you want to finish these up and decorate them, um, give them your own style, your own sense of crafting and do it your way. Um, so just go ahead and paint each one of them. And all I needed was one coat. I didn't need any more than that on these um, little slots that I made. Just make sure you allow them to completely dry. So once you're done painting all of them, again, just allow them to dry. And what I decided to do was go ahead and grab my backing and I wanted to give it some more um, strength and make sure that it stays in place and it doesn't bend over with the paperwork and stuff that I'm going to be adding on to this and using it for so what I did was add a strip of cardboard on either side of my back of my backing and you can use E6000 again or just use hot glue like I am and just attach it towards the corners or the ends of your backing just to give it that lift and that secure that uh, extra strength that it might need 
uh, depending on what you're going to place in there. So now once they're all completely dry, your cubbies, go ahead and grab them. And then here I am adding some E6000 in different areas and I'm going to add some hot glue as well. I'm trying to finish this one tube of E6000. I don't want to waste any of it so I do squeeze it out until there isn't any more. But go ahead and add some permanent glue and your hot glue in between in order to attach your little slot or cubby to your backing. Just make sure where you want to place it and then just lay it down and kind of press on it and make sure that it stays in place while it dries a little bit. And as you can see, I really didn't measure the front, the first cubby that I put in there. I just kind of placed it where I thought I wanted it to be. Now from the first cubby, I do measure up and decide I want my um, second cubby to be slightly higher than the first one. I guess you could say so. I ended up making it at a five inch or six inch mark and then I kind of just made sure that where it's at it's nice and even so I can kind of use those as a guide to place my second cubby and make sure it's nice and even and separate it from my first cubby as the, the um, space that I want in order for me to place larger um, envelopes and stuff like that on my first cubby, if that makes sense. So just go ahead and measure out using a ruler or anything you like from your first cubby to your second one, depending again on where you wanna place them. And then just mark it to make sure that you know where you're going to place it and it's nice and straight. Just hold on to it for a few seconds to allow that hot glue to dry. And then from my second cubby to my first cubby, I made it a slightly smaller and measured the different, the uh, spread apart, spread them apart slightly smaller in width, I guess you could say. And all I did was do a four inch from there. So just go ahead and place your third and final one. So here is your organizer. So you can do it and leave it just as is. I decided to cover up the ends. Um, I just didn't want that to look and to give it just a little bit more reinforcement. So what I did was use some of this black rope that I had and you can use any kind of rope you have. And I just glued it along the lines of my outer um, area of my each one of my cubbies. And you don't have to use the same color like I did. I just wanted it to all look seamless, but you can even play with it and use a bright color, um, any jute twine or even nautical rope if you like to add this little decorative touch to your cubbies. So like I said, I can't wait to start playing with some more cardboard. I was truly inspired to make other things with it and use it for other stuff. So stay tuned to um, for some of those tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed again, subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram. And I'll leave all that information down below for you as well. So I just left a little piece of that rope at the end because um, I am going to go ahead and glue it inwards once I was completely done just to give it more of a finished look than to cut it and leave it um, showing where I glued it. So just go ahead and continue doing the same process to all three of your little slots or cubbies, adding that glue along the edge or the end. And then you're going to just go ahead and add your rope to those lines of glue. I 
I don't know about everybody else, but I know I've done a lot of organizing, a lot of um, cleaning, deep cleaning around my home. And the only thing that I haven't done yet, and I'm still trying to get motivated, motivated to do is clean up my little section or my little corner of arts and crafts, my DIY corner. Um, I just haven't been inspired yet to do it. Um, I know I need to do it, but I just haven't. So I'm trying to figure out what style I want in that little corner and what I want for my backing and little things like that. So hopefully I'll kind of make up my mind and decide what I'm going to do and uh, make a tutorial for you guys to come along and see how I reorganize and clean up my little craft area. So here I am just kind of gluing inwards that piece of extra rope on either corner. Just folding it inwards. And then once I was completely done with that, I went ahead and got this stencil that I purchased at Dollar Tree as well. I hadn't used it before, so I thought this was a perfect project to use. Um, and I, what I did was basically add some white paint and just grab a brush and I'm going to dab it onto that stencil to make my numbers on each one of the cubbies. So I decided to start at the top one, the smallest one, and just put the one up there. And you can take your stencil onto your project. Um, I just held it in place with one of my fingers and just dabbed it in there. And I just made sure to wipe it down to, um, in order for it not to stain any of my other project areas. So the next one will be two, and then the last one will be three. And you can use any color again. I'm just using white because I wanted it all to flow and look um, nice and cohesive with my wall, my backing of my organizer. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and share with friends and family. And I hope all you new viewers subscribe to my channel. I'd love for you guys to join us. And this is how it looks hung up. And this is how it looks on top of a desk. Until next time, you guys stay blessed and stay busy. Bye.